Hello friends and welcome back to the Hall of Craft. So today, I want to do two goals. I want to cross them off my list. The first is painting Gorma the Great Worm. A um, model from Reaper Miniatures that I've been really anticipating for a long time. And the second is to learn to use an airbrush. Uh, I've been watching a lot of videos on people using their airbrushes, just drooling over their smooth, smooth, perfect, buttery blends, two colors merging into one, and uh, trying to replicate that with a brush was just not happening for me, so I decided, you know what, it is time, and I bought an airbrush. So today you're going to see two firsts from me, and uh, hopefully this goes to show you that it's not so hard and you can do it yourself. You just have to uh, be willing to give it a shot, so let's just jump right into it. So first thing, we just gotta glue this guy together. So I'm just gonna use some E6000 and I'm gonna spread it along all the areas that are gonna overlap with the toothpick and I'm just gonna plug them all together. So I'm gonna make sure not to use too much glue because if you use too much and you press the parts into each other, it's gonna spill out and nobody wants that. So I'm going to glue all of the pieces together except for Gorma and the base because I'm going to try and remove some of the mold lines on him after the gluing is done. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to take a sharp X-Acto knife and very carefully just try and remove this big mold line that's on his belly. He has one on his back too, but it's not as noticeable, so I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm just going to drag the blade along the line and cut those pieces off. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to use some green stuff to fill in the gaps on him. He has a pretty large gap around his gums, so I'm going to mostly focus on that area. And then where his head connects to the stock at the bottom, I'm going to fill in that as well. So you just cut off a piece, I cut off probably too much, and then you just mold it until it becomes green. Make sure to use lots of water so you don't stick it all over your hands and your mat. And 
then I flatten it out and start cutting strips off of it and putting them in place. I don't use anything to stick this to the miniature. Some other people do, but I don't find that you need it. Not for this, anyway. I'm just pressing it into a large gap so it holds itself. So I'm just using sculpting tools to make sure that it doesn't stand out too much. Okay, so once that's done, I'm going to attach them to the base. So first I'm going to take the base that comes with Gorman, I'm going to put a ton of E6000 on that, and then I'm going to attach it to one of my cork bases. Um, see my video on cork bases if you want to see how to make one of these for yourself. And then once that's pretty solid, I'm going to attach Gorman to the base itself. that to dry for a little while. Just make sure it's as straight as I can. Okay, so next step is some sand. So I'm going to take some generic white glue and just smother his base in all of the spots that I want sand. I'm going to try and blend the gap between the cork and the, uh, the mold and then just cover them in sand and leave them to dry overnight. Okay, so he's dry and I'm just gonna get all the excess off. Just gonna slap the bottom a little bit. And then I'll grab a brush and just get the rest of that off of there. So the last step we need to do before we paint is prime. So I'm going to use the zenith highlighting method, which means I'm starting with a flat black. I'm using Vallejo. So I'm just going to load my airbrush up with that and just coat them. I'm a little timid at first because I've never done this before, but I warm up to it pretty fast. Doing this with a brush would have taken easily twice or three times as much time. He's got a lot of nooks and crannies, so I'm pretty thorough with this coat. Okay, so we're gonna finish him off and then leave him to dry. It doesn't take very long. Okay, so now I'm just going to take some pure white. I'm using Reaper paints here. And I'm going to load my airbrush up with that. And I'm going to spray it from an above angle, like a 45 degree angle all around, and then a little bit more intense straight from the top to try and simulate the light sun would put it onto him. So what this does is it lets your paints keep those kind of tones when you paint him later on. So the areas on the light tones are lighter and the areas on the dark tones are darker. It's kind of a quick easy way to make you look like a lot better of a painter than you actually are. So just 
just try to spray from the angle that the sun would be hitting him and you'll be okay. I really want this to be high contrast, so I go pretty aggressive with the white. And that's it for part one of painting Gorma the Great Worm. He's all primed and ready to go, and tomorrow we're going to finish him off. So come back here and check it out. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and share this video with your friends if you feel so inclined. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.